Hey guys, back with another video on this this punch, the die and the punch. Dire Wolf Forge commented, I've got an Adams Brother number two in my shop and love it. I'd like to mimic the punch plate you made with you made with the built-in stripper. If you have more details, you could share. Thanks. So uh, Dire Wolf Forge, so yeah, no problem. Um, Let's get into the weeds with this. You know, a lot of the details are just arbitrary. They, they don't really matter. Um, as long as it fits, you know, your fly press or, or what you want to accomplish, accomplish your real estate, what you have to work with, that's, it can be wider, deeper, taller um, in a lot of different ways. But I, I, I made some drawings. Everything I made here, I modeled up in Fusion 360. So I, I made a couple drawings of the punch and of the die itself. And I'll go over some of the critical measurements or tolerances that, that I think you need to at least start with. And hopefully that'll, that'll answer your question and maybe other people's questions um, down the road if they happen to, to come across one of these videos. So first of all, this die is made out of 4140 steel. I milled it in an annealed state. and then hardened it here, here in, in house. So the, fin the finish is just the, the oil hardened finish that you get after you pull it out of your, out of your heat treat. Uh, it's double tempered. Actually, I think it was single tempered and the punch was double tempered. Tempered. I don't remember the Rockwell hardness, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's fairly hard. It's probably in one of, one of my videos. I designed it to accommodate this surface plate. So it's, it's held to the plate by two, I believe these are three eighths bolts with washer. And then I have enough play in here that, um, cause this is fixed, right? This is the fixed point. I have enough play in here that I can uh, line it up perfectly with this punch. And as for where, I probably have a hundred or so, maybe 200 punches in this. and. There is very minimal wear. It's a little shiny. I do have on this on this left side. I I didn't line it up quite right, and I was close to this side, so I have a little bit of damage here, but not too bad. So the punch is in similarly good condition. This was uh, made uh, on my lathe and and in and then milled in my CNC mill. The material is H13, and I modeled this after a ironworker punch. Meaning, here on the tip, there's a little. Well, let me pull it out here. Meaning, on that, there's a little tip here that puts a little center point in the in the material before it's punched through. And the edges are a little shiny, but for H13 especially, this has held up quite well. I think I mentioned in a, in a previous video that I much prefer to forge the punch. I think it's a lot tougher. I think it really manipulates and directs the grains for a stronger punch than machining the punch. But this works. This, wor this has worked pretty well. Now I mentioned that um, the, the only critical dimension here is the tolerance between you know, the width of this and the width of the slot that you're punching through. And I think a good place to start is to start with, with the slug. Let's take a look at these slugs and we'll, we'll see how, because I kind of guessed on this, but we'll see how well I guessed with my tolerance. So first of all, you can see you know, that's this that center feature clearly in the slug. There's a bit of a ragged edge where it pu pushed through. And then you can see how it's rounded on this on this top part here. But I think this is perfectly adequate with what I'm trying to do. I think that's a fairly clean punch. And this, so this tolerance, it, is most effective from what I understand is most effective when you're working con with a consistent thickness of metal. And I, I don't, I mean, I can be anywhere from 
quarter inch to three eighths. I mean, I suppose you could punch even thicker metal. And so you want to have a, in my opinion, you want to have a tolerance somewhere in the middle that'll accommodate uh, thinner metals and thicker metals. The thinner the metal is, if it's too thin, it's going to have more of this ragged edge and more of the bowing. Um, I think, in my, in my experience. I could be totally off. I'm obviously new to this, uh, so to speak. So here's, here's the workpiece that I just punched on camera. And uh, it's a little pushed here. This is a little thicker than I normal, normally do, but I think it, it worked quite well. And then you, you see here, it did, there's this artifact here, a little piece of metal. I didn't quite punch through here, and this matches the wear I have in the die where I actually uh, damaged the die slightly when I didn't have it perfectly aligned. Still works, but I think this is probably going to show up with every art artifact, or this artifact is going to show up with every every punch. So let me get into the numbers here. I'll flash, I'll flash this up on the screen. Maybe you, if you, anyone wants to have this information, they can uh, do a screen capture and print it out. Um, uh, I don't know, again, I don't know how helpful this will, this will be, but we'll get into it. Let's start with the punch. I think that's the most, the most critical. Um, so from, from this distance, lengthwise, the punch is 20 millimeters, okay? And then widthwise, it is 5.5. And I, I, this is where I, I did my absolute best to be perfect as perfectly accurate as I could because I knew it was going to um, work with the die. The diameter of this is slightly under one inch. I've got a, a one inch bore here that I have to match. I believe uh, I usually try to turn these down to about 980 thou, maybe 85 thou. Um, don't quote me on that. I, and again, I'm, I, I've got this, uh, this tool holder that I'm putting it in, but I, I want it to be slightly oversized or undersized because I don't want anything to get stuck. Um, but in, uh, in uh, metric, I do all of my, most of my uh, machining work in metric. I just think it's easier, more accurate. Well, not more accurate. I just think it's easier. So the, the diameter of this in millimeters would be 25.15 millimeters. Total length of, of my punch is about 74 millimeters, 73.85 millimeters is the total length. 75, just for reference, 75 millimeters is almost three inches. Not critical, again, not critical. This collar I uh, welded on after the fact, it's just mild steel. The drawings call out a 45, uh, degree chamfer here, which I actually didn't put on and the punch is is straight and goes down about 12 me millimeters until it um, It runs into this feature this 10 millimeter radius that brings it back out to the to this diameter here And that was all for looks I don't think there's anything critical there so let's move on to the die. So I've got in the corners, I've got four, it's tapped for four M8 threads. Obviously any, you can thread it however you want, but I went with M8 because one time I bought a box of M8, uh, uh, excuse me, of M8 hardware and I'm just trying to get through it. So I've got that on hand, so that's what I use. So each four corner is tapped for, for M8 so that I could come up with any type of uh, strippers that I that I want, and so this one's set up for railroad spikes. But honestly, I generally don't take it down. I use I use it for everything. I like this extra throat for the taller stock. And then um, I believe the stock I fabbed this out of was quarter no three sixteenths by one inch flat bar, and I've just raised it up with. I'll show you underneath here. Again, these aren't in the drawings, but I've just raised it up with in fab that as needed. You can put different things in here to uh, control 
where on the workpiece it's going to punch. And since I'm generally punching this size of material, I wanted to equidistance from between here and here and here and here. So that's why I've got this set up right now like this. Let me pull this off. Okay. So now we're getting into the the guts of the of the die. So as for the critical dimension Again, the punch was 20 millimeters by 5.5, and my tolerance is about 20 thousandths of an inch or half a millimeter. So the slot length is going to be 20.5 millimeters, all right? Half a millimeter bigger than the length of the punch. And then the width is six millimeters. Punch is 5.5, the width here is six millimeters. And uh, for, I believe I, I worked it out for a quarter inch, quarter inch material to do that, uh, or that, that tolerance for quarter, quarter inch. So, and it was just a guess on my part because there's, there's, there's so many, there are so many factors that, that go into this. Um, you know, what are my, how accurate is, is this slot going to be when I, when I machine it? It's probably going to be undersized and the punch is going to be oversized and then I'm going to heat treat it. It's, I'm going to get carburization and I'm going to clean it up. So it's kind of a guessing game and, and I, I usually guess pretty right. As for the overall dimensions, it's 75, 75 millimeters this way. Okay. It's about 75 millimeters, again, about three inches and 100 millimeters this way, about four inches. And then I have these two cutouts here and here, which give me a lot of latitude to adjust this way and a little bit of latitude front to back. It's just under an inch. It's just under an inch between here and here, okay? I have it at 24 millimeters, and then I have this this slot here for the bolt to pass through. That's about 10, mil, 10 millimeter channel here that the bolt can slide in on either side there. And then as for the height, this is 25 millimeters in height, just just under one inch. The stock I used. Here's an example of the stock. I bought this from McMaster Car, uh, certified 4140. And it was a good, uh, you know, uh, the stock size um, drove a lot of the, you know, decisions on how I would design this part. But this, this stock size, excuse me, this stock size is three inches by one inch. I just got a, a foot of this to uh, do, some, do this project with. Anyway, I could probably rattle on all day about this and, and uh, overcomplicate it. Um, but hopefully that answered your question or anyone's question about what, what I've got here. What I'll do is uh, I'm just going to throw these on the screen uh, to close out the video. I'll leave them on there for uh, a little while so you can take a gander and uh, hopefully get out in your shop and make one yourself. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you later. Bye.